Number 5. The great craftsman in the place of truth carry was one of the artists who decorated the royal tombs of the Valley of the Kings. Here he carries a standard crown with the head of a falcon, presumably an image of Horus, son of Isis, dot lord of the desert, who is addressed on the staff. In an inscription on the base, Kerry wishes for a good life combined with health, gladness, and rejoicing every day, my two eyes seeing, my two ears hearing, my mouth filled with truth. Number 4. This powerful figure of a crouching lion belongs to the beginning of Egypt's historic period, when the process of integrating Upper and Lower Egypt into one centralized state was underway. The simplified sculptural treatment, with the tail curled over the back and the absence of a base, is typical of sculpture from this period, when the Egyptians were learning to master the art of carving in hard stone. Number 3. Tusk figures belong to a group of abbreviated figurines made in the pre-dynastic period. Such figurines emphasize only facial features and sexuality, while eliminating or schematizing limbs. Tusk figurines exploit a natural form the tusk of a hippo creating a male figure that radiates sexuality. This figurine is a superbly finished version of the type with the tusk step carved into ring and a face and shoulders fashioned below. Although the eyes are only indicated by incised outlines with dots for pupils, the nose and mouth are well modeled. Number 2. Plaster masks seem to have been particularly popular in Middle Egypt. They develop, of course, from Egyptian traditions, but appearances could be strongly individualized and Roman fashions of hairstyle, dress, and jewelry were followed to varying degrees. This mask is very similar to a group from Mare and almost certainly came from that site. The woman is represented as if lying flat upon her beer. She wears a long Egyptian-style wig made of plant fibers, a deep red tunic with black clavy stripes, and jewelry that includes a lunula, crescent pendant, and snake bracelets. At the lower edge of her tunic are two holes, which were used for attaching the mask to the mummy. Number 1. The god's elegant features are carved in a style belonging to the reign of the pharaoh Amenhotep of three. In his massive fist, the god holds a scepter, signifying dominion, and in his missing right hand, he would have held the ankh hieroglyph, meaning life. Though attributes or inscription that would identify this god are missing, the statue was almost certainly one of the series of divine statues erected by Amenhotep III in his vast mortuary temple in western Thebes. These represented the congregation of the Egyptian gods in attendance at the king's 30-year festival, or Hebsed. The site of this temple is identified by the Colossi of Memnon, two monumental seated statues representing the king which stood in front of the entrance pylon of the temple. Amenhotep III celebrated three Hebseds and constructed a palace city for this purpose at the site of Malkata a mile or so south of his mortuary temple. 